Hello everybody, thank you for watching. It is Bad Weather Freak one more time. And uh, now I'm taking a little bit more time to make this video, a little bit more in-depth um, video about the 2021 hurricane season. And specifically what we're watching, which is Tropical Storm Fred. And uh, let's get started to it. So as you can see right now, we have Tropical Storm Fred. Now let's read it. Let's read the um, the latest National Hurricane Center update since it just came out. It's uh, 203 as the recording of this video, 203 p.m. And um, it is uh, moving west northwest at 16 miles per hour. It has a minimal pressure, minimum pressure of 1,006 millibars, and max sustained winds of 45 miles per hour. So it is barely a tropical storm. And um, it is not expected to continue intensifying, as I'm going to show you closer in a minute. It is uh, uh, about to make landfall over Hispaniola or the Dominican Republic. So let's uh, show you real quick uh, the forecast or the cone of uncertainty. And um, I like it because it shows, obviously, the projected path or the potential path, but also show us the uh, different, um, uh, you know, how the, how strong is it going to be, the intensity. And uh, as you see, uh, and again, we're going to take a closer look, but it, as it goes over Hispaniola, is having, you see this little D, that means it's going to be downgraded from an S, which S is for a tropical storm. So in other words, it's a tropical storm right now, and it's going to be downgraded to a depression um, as it moves over Hispaniola. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that Hispaniola has very, very tall mountains. Um, it has some mountains that are up to 10 or 11,000 feet high. So when you have systems go through those super high mountains, what is going to end up happening is it's going to basically just shred them. Uh, it's going to significantly impact the storm. Uh, they start falling apart. The stronger the storm is when it goes over the, um, the island, you know, of course, the more potential of survival it has. The weaker the storm, the quickly it's gonna de it's gonna basically fall apart, and that's that's pretty much what is happening with Fred. And I'm, again, I'm gonna show you soon. But because it's so it's such a small storm, it's not well defined at the at the center of circulation. It's just overall a, a, a terrible looking system. That's why it's, the National Hurricane Center is having it uh, getting basically or or downgrading it to a uh, tropical depression instead. Now, as of right now, you have uh, the um, eastern part of Dominican Republic, southeast and the northern part of Dominican Republic under a, a, a tropical storm uh, warning. And then you have uh, the northern and northwest part of Haiti under a tropical storm watch. Some of the Turk and Caicos uh, you also have about half of the eastern part of Cuba also under the Tropical Storm Watch. And that basically means that they're keeping an eye on it and they're just issuing these warnings so, uh, or the watches in this case. So people start preparing and, and getting ready for the storm as it is, put, it is possible that they're going to have uh, uh, some, some significant impacts from a tropical storm within the next usually 36 hours or so. Um, and that's why uh, uh, they're, they, they start the watches first. And as it becomes imminent, like then they upgrade that to a tropical storm warning because that means it's definitely happening and, and within a short period of time. Um, now, as you can see, the P Florida Peninsula is, is basically under, um, you know, and this is the thing. When you see this cone, what that cone means is the center of circulation of the storm can go anywhere within the cone. OK, so if you have, the, let's say, the center circulation coming through here, through the very corner, see, like, uh, I'm going to go see if I can. I'm going to try this. I don't think I've ever used this in one of these. But if you have the storm coming through the eastern part of um, of Florida, OK, so I'm messing with this now, but um, let's turn that off. Um, if you come, if, if the center comes through here, obviously, the, the worst part of the storm is, is going to be on uh, out uh, out on the ocean so not much impacts are going to be felt in florida depending on how strong the storm is now you still got some effects on the west part of the storm on the north part of the storm but the worst part is on the northeast part of the storm that's where you usually have the strongest winds and and things like that um, but right now again 
In my opinion, I think um, it's too soon to tell what is going to happen. It seems to me like there, there's a, a hit, um, the Bermuda high, which usually is, is a mechanism that pushes down storms. It seems like it's actually further west or closer to Florida, and that's why the track has been, sh been shifted for the past day or so further west. Now, the, the track has been slowly being shifted to the east, meaning that taking it closer to Florida, potentially the center circulation may uh, get fairly close to the Tampa Bay area. And that's uh, one thing we got to keep an eye on. It all depends how bad it gets disrupted by the Dominican Republic. That's the main thing in Haiti. Um, once it reemerges into the uh, back into the water, that's how or pretty much we're gonna know how much stronger is it gonna get, and, and the track if it's gonna shift one way or the other, basically. So that's what we're keeping an eye on uh, right now. But let's take a look and see how is Fred is looking on the satellite imagery. Like I mentioned before, it's looking pretty terrible. Um, it's very disorganized. It earlier today kind of wanted it to have uh, or intensify a little bit, but as the center circulation being on this area here is roughly around here, um, because it is on this area, it's about to make landfall and go over some high mountains. So that's why you see that is, or you guys see that it's kind of falling apart in a sense. Now, don't get me wrong; in the last few hours, it's definitely getting a little bit of an outburst, but it's not gonna it's not gonna last long as it moves. Oh, actually inland it's like the last it's basically making like the last effort to intensify and, and create more thunderstorms and more convection but um, it, it's just getting it's, it's running out of time basically because as it goes over to Hispaniola again it's gonna basically get weaker and potentially you know uh, significantly uh, uh, not, I don't want to say fall apart but you know what I mean uh, basically um, uh, not be as intense anymore um, so that's the satellite imagery. Now let's take a look. Let's take a look at the spaghetti models. I already show you the um, the forecast or the cone. This is um, as of right now the latest spaghetti models. You can see that only one has it coming right through Florida, while the other ones, the majority of them, have it pretty in a pretty good agreement that this thing is probably going to the Florida Panhandle. Again. We have to see. It's uh, it's not it's not set in stone. This track can shift further west. It can shift further east. Get closer to Florida. Again, it's we have to wait and see what happens. It's too early to tell. It has a lot of land here that it could potentially interact with, and if that happens, we may not even have a storm to actually make anything significant, like have any uh, significant impacts. Um, so let's go back uh, now as far as intensity guidelines so far none of the models but maybe like two maybe three have it reaching the category one status as of right now again it all depends how much it gets disrupted passing or going through the Dominican Republic like I was mentioning the low low, low level circulation is right here so it's expected to continue to move uh, you know kind of like this and you know kind of cross uh, cross Hispaniola like that. Um, so right now, everything is going to change once once Fred crosses over and reemerges here. That is when we are going to have a better idea how strong is it going to be if it decides to if it survives and it comes to Florida. Um, that or where it's going basically. Now let's go back and take a look at the forecasting models and see what some of the uh, some of the forecasting models are saying that this is potentially what is going to happen. As far as the GFS, let me change the region so we can kind of have a broader picture of what is going to happen. Um, so right now I'm just moving this forward, so 66 hours out. See, this is what I was mentioning. You guys, we have a high pressure system here. Uh, let me actually change that to purple, so it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit better. Oops, let me see. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. Okay, so, nah, okay. Yeah, I'm still messing with this and trying to learn it, but anyways, you see the green. Um, so, again, this high-pressure system, is if it keeps moving more closer to Florida, that's what's going to push uh, Fred to kind of particularly take us more southern track and, and further west and potentially um, impacting the Florida Panhandle or, unfortunately, Louisiana. 
I know you guys don't need that over there, especially with a record-breaking season last year. But um, as far as uh, the GFS, again, see, GFS has it com pretty much completely falling apart. And then as it gets closer to the Florida Keys, kind of picking up a little bit of steam, um, not a whole lot. It's, it doesn't have a lot, a lot of time. And then kind of like making landfall on the Florida Panhandle as a 1,009 uh, 1009 millibar storm, which is basically a low-end tropical storm, if if anything, maybe a, a tropical depression. Um, and uh, there was another system that, again, we go back to, let me go back here on the National Hurricane Center, this, this cross or this X here. It has a very similar track to Fred. Um, again, not expecting much out of it. It has a medium or, or basically a low chance within the next 48 hours, 50% chance of development, uh, five days out. Again, too far out. We need to keep an eye on that, but nothing, nothing to worry about at the moment. So let me go back and, uh, here the, uh, so we don't have to talk much about that, but the GFS, as we move it further, it develops this system here. And that's basically where it cut us off. Now, if this if this happens, according to the GFS, what is going to end up happening is, you see where the high pressure is? It's too far to the east. So what this is going to do is, the storm is going to just basically uh, uh, come this way and, cur out and curve out to sea. That's what is going to end up happening if the high pressure stays this far east. If it moves closer to Florida, again, it's going to block it and get it closer to Florida. But again, this is 384 days out. It's way, way too far out to to even be paying attention to it. But nevertheless, it's, I, I look at it just to kind of have a broader idea. Now that's according to the GFS. Now the European, see the European has Fred, kind of uh, uh, where it is right now, going through the Dominican Republic, re-emerging here. As you can see, let me kind of highlight it. See right here. So it, it, it has it a little stronger than the GFS, uh, re-emerging back into the open ocean and then now this is interesting so here it has a more like a, a picking up a little steam as it gets close to Florida and then making making landfall actually in the Miami area now how strong we don't know but they this is an interesting thing the GF the GFS had it picked up pretty good uh, Elsa but not the European model the European model I remember had Elsa kind of like many times kind of curving out and then eventually falling apart completely so it did not do a very good job uh well more like this way so it, it had it had elsa kind of coming this way and and going out to sea but not really getting any stronger many times or many of the runs it actually fell apart so you know um for many years the european model was very very reliable in the past probably year or two maybe three years it hasn't been that great but again, it's one of the main models and it doesn't mean it's a terrible forecasting model, but it has not been too reliable. But another, nevertheless, we're still paying attention to it um, because once you start getting multiple forecasting models, um, uh, getting into agreement, that's when you need to really, really pay attention because that means there, there's a really good agreement and a really good chance or high probability that the storm is gonna be around the same in intensity and location than the majority of the models are saying. So you can see two completely different scenarios, but the European has that as a re-emerging a little stronger and then intensifying as it makes landfall to Miami. Now this is 72 hours out. So again, pretty, pretty credible in my opinion. And then that, the itty bitty wave that was out here, you see how it has it kind of already starting to curve out to see the European model. Um, then kind of crossing the peninsula, uh, Fred will be, according to the uh, European model, 96 hours out. It has it going over. Now, this is an interesting thing. So that means it's gonna be, it's gonna be moving very slow because it has it barely making landfall in Miami at 72 hours out, which is August 14th. So in three days at around eight in the morning, making landfall in Miami. Now, when I push this forward, we're talking about 24 hours later, roughly, it's still in the Florida Peninsula, not even exiting out. So seems like it's going to be a slow-moving storm 
according to the European model. Now let's take about let's take a look at the Canadian model. Let's see what the Canadian model says. Um, let's see if we have any kind of agreement. Let's see. All right. So okay. So the Europe. So the Canadian model has it very very similar, like the Europe the European, more ragged. So weaker as it exited the Hispaniola coast. Very, very similar track. Very weak, though. Making landfall roughly Miami. And it kind of picks up a little steam as it moves ac across the state. But it has it... Um, it has it a little... Moving a little quicker. 66 hours out instead of 72 so roughly 2 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. And as it moves again closer uh, or over Florida, um, it kind of uh, picks up a little steam going over, but then it starts again falling apart. And it's expected since it's over land. Okay, now that is the, the Canadian model. And then the wave here again, very see All of the models are in agreement. This is going out to sea. Yeah, that's pretty... That's pretty pretty well um, in consensus, basically all of them. Now let's let's take a look at the Navy model and see what it says. Mm, okay, see the Navy model has the high pressure way way far west. Um, see the Canadian the the Navy model really I don't yeah this is not too reliable because it doesn't even have Fred at all. Like look like right now we should be we should have Fred down here. And it, it does it does it's not even picking it up, so that's obviously not a great model. But it shows a low level kind of coming off the, the coast of uh, Cuba into the Gulf, making landfall again in the Florida Panhandle as a, a thousand two millibar storm, and then it has the other one here. So I'm not really paying attention too much to this one. Now that was basically like the forecasting model. Now let's take a look at the hurricane models, which these are more focused in intensity. So let's see what the H wharf says. So let's go back. All right, now let's see right now. All right, so a thousand five millibars. So it's pretty, pretty accurate. Very similar location. As we move forward, it it, it definitely disrupts the system quite a bit, and then it has it like pretty much falling apart and slowly going up, picking up steam. So now see it. Now this is a thing. These some of these models have been very reliable. They forecasted past storms much better than some of the other ones, but they have a tendency of of really blowing up storms, and uh, that's what they did with Elsa. They had Elsa as a, I think it was a category three, or category four, uh, making or making landfall in Cuba, and we know that it was nowhere near close to what actually happened. So, this is something that again. I wouldn't pay too much attention, but let's move forward. So it keeps intensifying. Now, the fact that it has, again, making landfall in Miami as a Category 2 potentially, Category 2 hurricane, 902 millibar. It has a more structured, uh, well-developed uh, uh, hurricane at this point uh, than the other uh, forecasting models. But again, Miami, one more time, it's another area to, to watch. That is, uh, then it's, it kind of weakens it for us as it goes over the uh, over the uh, state. Now let's take a look at the H wharf P and see what this one uh, calls out for. Um, again, falling apart over Hispaniola, then starting to develop, picking up steam slowly, um, and then again making landfall in Miami as a 983. So again. Uh, Similar scenario, HMON in the other hand. Let's see what the HMON says. Mm, let's take a look and see. Okay, so the HMON has it again. Similar spot going over Hispaniola, which is expected. Falling apart, but then and, and, and this is kind of weird. Sometimes storms do this where they fall apart completely and then the low level circulation gets picked up by the atmosphere and, and, and moved or transferred to a different area. And that's what it seems to be the case here. But I don't, I don't, I don't trust it too much. I mean, this is a big, big change. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds of miles shifted west, so I'm not too sure about that. 
Then has a kind of going over eastern Cuba. Again, that's a worst case scenario for the storm. Um, very high mountains in Cuba. And then it's flip-flopping too much. So again, I, I wouldn't even pay too, too much attention to it. You see how it keeps just shifting. It's like drunk. <laughs> um, and then has a pretty close to Florida, to the peninsula, picking up steam. Um, 993, 992, 988. So making landfall way west than some than the, basically all the other uh, um, forecasting models, almost like Louisiana in in Florida Panhandle uh, landfall almost at the border. Um, so this is again like a Category One hurricane making landfall here, but this is really far. So I'm not too sure about that. But again, we're having agreement potentially Miami. Um, it's too ter too early to tell. We need to know. First of all, this is the this is the thing, guys. Keep in mind, we need to know where this storm is going to end up once it moves over Hispaniola and how strong is it going to be. Um, that's going to be the key. Depending, so when it merges over water, how strong is it, and where is it? Because, like I mentioned before, sometimes if it falls apart completely, it could, the track completely will shift the other way. I'm sorry. Let me just put you, put you guys on a brief mute here. Oh, sorry about that. Some kids walking by in front of my house and the dogs <laughs> went crazy. Um, so going back here. Um, so yeah, that's what the HMON has it. Making landfall, Florida Panhandle, and Louisiana uh, border. So well, let's take a quick look one more time at the satellite. Um, that's basically what is going on with Fred. Again, about to make landfall. So it's falling apart. Um, and it's, it's okay. It's expected. And um, we so we just got to keep an eye out. Um, I want to show you one more thing. I do have I do use this particular app, my Raider. Very very good app. I love this app. I don't think I've ever showed this app here on my uh, on my channel. But here I like it because it keeps a very good line where the storms is going. Um, again, has it going pretty pretty much. I mean, similar to, I think it was the HMON, right? One of those forecasting models. But I really like to keep an eye out because it gives you a really good view of where this thing potentially may, may be making landfall. Right now, it's sitting around Ap Apalachicola or Panama City, east of Panama City. But again, it's probably going to, that, that track is definitely going to change. But it's just too early to tell. Um, but either way, that's all I have for you guys. Um, any questions? Like always, post them in the comment section below. Any comments? Um, up again, as this, we get closer to the peak of the season, I'm trying to make more videos more often, so that we uh, we can stay on top of the tropics and see if anything is coming our way. But other than that, you guys stay safe. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of the day. Um, and like I said, just put any comments on the comment section if you have any questions. And uh, don't forget to hit, uh, subscribe and hit the like button, the bell notification, so you get notified when I upload videos. And uh, other than that, thank you for watching. Have a good day.